I want to talk to you about this concept of nurture. And my first, not necessarily recollection, but realization of being nurtured is uh, the decision that my mother made while I was in the womb. You see, I was born in San Francisco, California, and my mother made a decision. She could have stayed in San Francisco with the sun, uh, with the radical people and, and the awesome views, but she made a decision to bring me here to Flint, Michigan. And she brought me here because she decided that it would be best for me to be around my family, the majority of her family, which of course is my family. And this component of nurture is made up, or nurture is made up of six components. Uh, it involves you being fed, or to, be, to feed, to be protected, supported, encouraged, trained, and educated. And I want you to keep those concepts in mind when you hear me speak about this concept and how uh, my mother's decision incorporated all these things. She brought me to Flint, Michigan, and when she brought me here, she had two things in mind. She was going to take care of her great-grandmother, and she was going to raise me. Uh, and she did that. She stopped working so that she could be at home with me. Uh, I'm not one of those people who grew up with babysitters. I didn't have that uh, privilege. I couldn't share in that conversation in elementary school. Um, but I did have family, and my family took care of me. I grew up in a communal setting. And when I was growing up, I didn't understand how powerful that choice was. I was a little bit ashamed because I lived in a three-bedroom house with 10 people. And uh, I had a great-grandmother, an aunt, a mother, and an older cousin, and all the kids. So I learned right away uh, to, I had to adapt in this environment. I couldn't experience the privileges, I guess, of a single child, an only child, where you get everything you want, and, and you have your own room, and things like that. And I saw that as a negative. Uh, but it turned out that I was wrong. You see, in this house, I had to share rooms. And I had to change rooms from time to time. I had to share food. I had to think if, about my peers, my cousins, and think about how the things I got affected them. I had to look at their faces if I got something they didn't. And I was affected and became sensitive to their needs. Um, we made it work, though. We made it work. We had good times. And those times informed who I am today. I became an artist. I made the choice to become an artist. I am an actor first, and I became a filmmaker as well. I had a lot of opportunities. Uh, I am a product of Flint community school system, public school system. And my first school was Brownell Elementary. I walked to school. It was a time when I could do that. I remember being five years old and walking to school. And my school was not too far. It was in one of those house-looking schools. It looked like a little house. Kindergarten uh, was there. I went there. My cousins went there. And then we transferred to Big Brownell. And something happened to me in third grade. In third grade, I encountered a teacher who was uh, another nurturer for me. He fed me information. He protected me in the classroom. He supported me. He encouraged me. He even sent me to another classroom because he noticed that I wasn't being challenged enough, that the work was too simple. So he sent me into a fourth grade classroom where my cousin was there. So I got to be in class with my big cousin. And he decided to call my mother up to uh, the school. And he said, this young lady is talking a lot in class, and she's getting in a little bit of trouble. But it's because she's bored. And he suggested that my mother put me in another school. So I went to Walker Learning Center that doesn't exist anymore. Yay, Walker Walkers. We had a big tennis shoe. That was our mascot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But anyway, I went to this school. And at this school, um, I actually met Jackie King, who was just up here. Uh, he taught me karate. Um, and I also was able to participate in photography class, music, um, typing. I learned how to type in the fourth grade, and I can still type because of that class. Um, and then I went on to Longfellow Middle School, and I went on to Southwestern Academy and Northern High School. 
And believe it or not, my focus at the time was in the math science curriculum. Well, I was sort of being pushed in that direction. And um, I ended up following that path to a certain extent. I had a few moments along the way that steered me in a different direction, at least inside of me. I didn't necessarily share with everyone, but I played a magician in my fifth grade play, Many Moons, at Walker. <laughs> and then I also became a French painter called Popovich at Longfellow Middle School. And those things sat inside of me, um, and they allowed me to, uh, to just explore those particular interests. And something happened to me uh, right about, mm, I'd say, middle school. And this is a time where I was nurtured because my mother allowed me to watch a certain program on TV. And this program was called The Cosby Show. And The Cosby Show, not only did it save NBC, but it instilled a certain pride in me. For the first time that I could recall or even noticed, I was seeing African Americans on television being and doing what I dreamed of. The mom was a lawyer, the dad was a doctor, they had the kids had their, their rooms. They also shared, too. Some of them shared rooms, so I could relate to that. Um, and then he created this other show called A Different World. And A Different World uh, was another component that shaped what would happen to me. It introduced me to college, and specifically historically black colleges and universities. I never knew what that was. I hadn't heard that term. Even though I was in this accelerated program and I, college was always talked about from my mother, from my peers, I didn't know that such a thing existed. So I began to dig because I wanted to be like those kids on that show. And they reminded me of my friends and, and they showed me what I could become, if you will, in terms of my choice of what I was doing. And so I enrolled in Howard University. I got accepted and I went there. And I proudly represented Flint, Michigan. There were some people there who wouldn't admit they were from Flint. They would say, I'm from Detroit. And at that time, people, people in the world knew Michael Moore, but uh, he wasn't as big as he, he is now. So I would have to take my hand and show them. They'd say, where is Flint? It's right here, <laughs> just above Detroit. And now I don't have to say that anymore uh, because people know Flint. I do have a little bit of a problem with how people know Flint. Uh, I live in Los Angeles right now, and I still represent Flint, Michigan. I still come back and, and do things here artistically. And people, when I tell them I'm from Flint, they give me this look, and they're like, whoa, you're from that place. And I have to, if I have the time, if they're willing to listen, let them know that uh, Flint was a good place. It made me who I am. Uh, I had a good experience in Flint, and I continue to have a good experience in Flint when I come here. Um, Flint nurtured me. Flint has fed me, protected me, has supported me, encouraged me, uh, and educated me. And I feel that um, it's only my responsibility to try to do the same thing uh, with people that are from here, with people that live across the country, and things of that nature. And so I want to say to you um, that the most important thing that I discovered when dealing with this concept is that nurturing occurs whether you're aware of it or not. How many people can remember when they were a kid and they were asked what they wanted to be when they grew up? If you can remember that, raise your hand. Wow. Have you ever thought that probably, possibly, that was not the right question. What I mean by that is that as a child, you're born, you exist, people love you, typically you're loving, uh, you are, everyone has different experiences, but you're pretty innocent and you're pretty wonderful. Most of us in here love kids. And I think that you already are who you're supposed to be when you're asked that question. I think that perhaps the question is not what do you want to become, but the question is who are you going to continue to be? How are you going to grow? And what will you choose to do to show people who you are? 
And I get to my final concept in this piece here, and I think that the dictionary forgot one component, which is to release. The goal of being nurtured is so that one can be released. And I think people are afraid of that step. At some point, you have to trust what you've been taught. You have to trust what you've absorbed. You have to trust the things you don't like. You have to trust the things you choose to uh, aspire toward. And you have to release yourself. You re have to release that nurturing into whatever you choose to do. And I think that if you do that, you will find success no matter what your choice is. You're not successful because of what you become and that being the same as what you said you do when you grew up. You're successful because of who you are and how you show that in what you do. And I think that if we begin to focus more on who we are as people, uh, the good and the bad, the fears, the joys, uh, the jealousies that may arise, uh, and find out why we feel those things so that we can use them as motivation and navigate toward the good things of who we are, then you will find wonderful, wonderful success, and you will have the freedom to choose so that when General Motors leaves town or whomever else decides to shut their doors on you, it's not the end of the world because you are still who you are. That can, no one can ever take that away from you. That is your constant. And if you focus on who you are, you can reinvent what you do every single day. So for me, although I had strength in math and science, and that's where people kind of saw me, um, that was only one outlet as to where I could go and how I could show who I was. For myself, I chose to let go of my fears, and I chose to become the artist that I desire to be. And that was one of the most freeing experiences I've ever had in my life. And if tomorrow I want to choose to be a lawyer or a doctor, I have no doubt in my mind that I would succeed at that. So I want to pass that on to you. And I think that you guys know because you're here. But if you didn't know, Flint is the great sleeper. We are a wonderful place. We come from a wonderful uh, heritage. And we work together, and we can do anything that we aspire to do as long as we stay focused on who we are and continue to hone who we are. There's no limits. And I hope that you leave here with that tonight, today, this morning. And I hope that you, if you ever get in doubt about your decisions, just start thinking of the person that you are and who you were when you were planted on this earth and continue to work in that direction and everything else will take care of itself. So please release yourself. Thank you.